My early adopter Prusa XL has given me plenty of trouble. But will new customers have a smoother ride? Let's find out as we try out a new replacement printer. After another breakdown, I finally caved and agreed to let Prusa send me a complete replacement machine. So what you're seeing in this video should be more indicative of what a new customer will receive. But before that, an update. A lot of people have speculated that my SP08 tool changer project has been abandoned, but I can reassure you that it has not and it's still in progress. In the last installment, the coupling mechanisms were complete for both the shuttle and each of the tools. And after filming that video and putting everything back together, it was discovered that the heads no longer reached the bed. But that was an easy fix, as all we needed to do was raise the bed up about a centimetre. I then ordered, waited for and received the probe that was going to be used for automatic nozzle offset calibration. So there has been progress, so why so much delay? In essence, progress has been difficult because of time and space constraints. At the start of this year, I reviewed the Creality K2 Plus, and one of them broke so they had to send me another, and that took up the spot where the SP08 was working. Following this, I was reviewing the Bamboo Lab H2D with two versions, as well as the Carvera Air, and as you can see, I had to set up an extra table just to accommodate all of this, meaning the SP08 once again was pushed aside. I've now finished enough of those other videos that the SP08 once again has space on a bench in reach of a PowerPoint. But for most of this year, I have been back in the classroom, so instead of doing YouTube full time, it's been more like a little over half time. So genuine challenges, but I do apologize for the delay, as I know there's some that are waiting patiently. So as a peace offering, and in anticipation of the next installment, you'll find in the description a link to this document, which contains all of the CAD for everything I've done so far. There hopefully won't be many changes from here, so if you have been following along, feel free to come into this document, right click on any part, then come to export and choose a format of your choice. This will give you files to print or files to edit, whatever it is that you desire. Just to be clear, the next installment isn't directly around the corner, but it is underway once again. So back to the main tool changer topic, my Prusa XL experience. And as you can tell by this thumbnail, it didn't start out so well. Despite being quite a long way behind schedule, early adopters such as myself couldn't help but feel that the printer was still half-baked. Stringing, blobbing, and layer shifts were all problems that I frequently encountered. So to help this, I turned to community mods, like these little purge buckets with brushes, to try and clean the nozzle on every tool change. And try as I might after all kinds of back-to-back -back testing, even my best effort was not the same quality as what I could produce on a bamboo layer printer with AMS using the exact same filament. Given the cost of this machine and the weight, I was not very impressed. And amazingly, people question this graphic without actually reading it, quoting how much theirs cost in US dollars and comparing it to my Australian dollars total. And a reminder that that bank fee was due to a problem on Prusa's website that made me have to transfer money back and forth. And of course, some people said it was my fault for using the alpha firmware. So I made a follow-up video switching to the mainstream firmware and surprise, surprise, the same problems were still there. Soon after this, Prusa Slicer released an update that changed the logic for the tool changes and added ramming. This reduced the blobs, but it didn't eliminate the stringing. It was, however, a step in the right direction. Quite a bit of time passed before I released this major update video. In the interim, Prusa had updated the official spec to 0.4 nozzles, so I paid extra money to order a set of my own. People have also expressed surprise over the price of these nozzles, but as you can see, they're far more than just the tip. So hopefully that makes it a little more understandable. After fitting these and undertaking some other maintenance and upgrades, print quality was improved again, but once again still with some fine stringing. Significantly, multi-color, multi-tool prints were much improved as well. And I finally got a clownfish comparison print that could rival what the Bamboo Lab printers could do, with the large benefit of not producing so much purge waste. So as long as I could live with the stringing, I finally had a printer that was printing how it should. And this status remained correct for quite a while until recently when I thought I would do some back-to-back -back comparison prints with the Bamboo Lab H2D. And when I went to unload and load filament for that, the extruder steppers for all five tools decided that they didn't want to rotate. No error messages, just a complete non-response from either the automatic sequences or any heated up manual movements. Frustratingly, the solution was a complete factory reset and that meant running all of the calibrations once more. However, this time I couldn't get to the end of them for all five tools, giving up after around 15 attempts. 
Fortunately, four tools was enough to run the tests I needed, but I was pretty upset over the whole thing. And things only got worse as about a week or so later, when the printer was sitting there idle doing nothing, I had this firmware error. And after rebooting, the third tool was no longer flashing the right color and was no longer recognized in the Excel's menu. So at this point, I caved and agreed to let Prusa send me a complete replacement printer. I've had a few consistent comments every time I mention my Excel woes. Basically, a new customer says they've been trouble free and that absolutely makes sense because early adopters did have their fair share of problems. You'd hope those would be ironed out and newer customers shouldn't experience anything like that. A new printer and hopefully a much better experience. And in the interest of transparency, I was also sent some rolls of filament and some spare beds. And I was worried about damage due to this, but everything inside was fine. After opening up the top of the box, I got to work, setting up the new printer and running through the calibration. All up, this took at least half a day, and this was slowed down for a very simple reason. Every time I completed a step on the new printer, I did the exact same in reverse on the old one, so I could repackage the items and get the old printer ready to send back to Prusa for analysis. And this gave me the chance to compare any obvious upgrades compared to my early adopter version, with the first of those being the injection molded cover for the controller interface. Another similar upgrade is to the spool holders, and the old ones were 3D printed, with the new ones again being injection molded and having a catch so they don't pull out so easily. Since I got mine in 2023, there's been a range of other updates that aren't so obvious. For instance, from June 2024, there's been subtle upgrades to the inside of the extruders, and that means if you're fitting an enclosure, you no longer need to disassemble them to replace internal parts. And a change very pertinent to me, a reworking of where the cable bundle plugs into the top of each tool. The old one was simply held in place by the connector, but the new one has two holes, and after the cable is plugged in as before, there's quite a gap between the two components. So as they're forced together, you can see that the wires with this design are pushed really hard towards the connector. An M3 bolt either side is used to achieve this. And I guess one day I'll find out if this is more reliable long term. Beyond that, my assembly was straightforward and I took some steps that I learnt from last time, like adding Loctite to the single bolt that holds on each tool mount, as on my original XL, this vibrated loose over time. Unfortunately, they haven't expanded the room for cable management on the back. This remains tight and fiddly, but if everything is reliable, you shouldn't really need to visit this area again. As you can see, even when everything's together, it kind of looks like the printer is being attacked by an octopus. After connecting the other end of the bundle to the top of each tool, I adjusted the height of the new grey silicon nozzle blockers and greased up the locating nipples on each tool. So I started up the printer and found that it was already on the latest stable branch of the firmware. After connecting to my Wi-Fi, which is thankfully more streamlined than it used to be, despite the clumsy encoder-driven keyboard, I commenced with all of the automatic self-checks and calibrations, and unfortunately had a repeated error on the Tool 1 part cooling fan. I reran the test a few times with the same result. I hit the internet and found search results saying to remove the part cooling fan duct. This fixed the problem, and looking ahead, honestly this was the only blip I had during the whole process. That's not to say that this part of the setup isn't time consuming, with the worst being the dock calibration that on a 5 tool gets repeated 5 times and involves dismantling 2 pins, loosening a pair of bolts, before manually coupling each tool with a shuttle, retightening a bolt, and removing your hand so the printer can then home and learn the dock location. We then tighten the other bolt, reinstall the 2 pins, and let the printer test this sequence repeatedly until it's happy. The load cell test also needs interaction, but this one only takes a few seconds, and the other test that takes a while is the tool offset calibration, but this one at least is completely automated after you insert the pin. And I'm pleased to report it completed first go, which was a great relief after my original machine couldn't complete this test. Another good improvement that I noticed during these tests is that it's no longer anywhere near as hard to push the filament through the first filament runout sensor. It used to jam, but now all it needs is a little twist. That was actually pretty smooth, so how does it print? I wanted to start by reprinting a baseline that I had previously completed, this articulated armadillo by MacGyver. Remember that my old XL produced this faster and with less waste than H2D, but it also suffered from more stringing despite the filament being the same and being printed back to back. So after loading up the exact same filament, some of which has since been through a cycle in the dryer, the result was pretty much on par with my previous XL. The improvements I noted during assembly appear to target reliability rather than print quality. 
I think by now I have enough other printers to compare to and enough Excel testing to conclude that the Excel inherently suffers for more stringing compared to other printers. It has improved to the point where it wouldn't be too hard to remove it most of the time, but it's still definitely a downside and frustrating. And people always say to dry the filament, but remember the same filament is fine in other printers. And there's not much point having a segmented bed where you only heat up the parts that you need if you're consuming that electricity elsewhere by using filament drying systems. So that's consistent for PLA, but what about PETG, which I hadn't really used much on the old machine. First, this motorized Wankel engine. And this first piece was done with a spool of PETG that was already open, and as you can see there is some fine stringing. Otherwise, I'd say the quality is acceptable, apart from some subtle VFAs on some surfaces. The remaining parts were all printed on a newly opened roll of PETG, and there was still a little bit of fine stringing, although this was a clear improvement over the old roll. Judging by the fine stringing in between the teeth on this spur gear, I would say that small retractions offer the biggest problem. This also matches what I found on the PLA Armadillo. So room for improvement, but not exactly a deal breaker because it is pretty easy to clean up. I've also started printing PETG parts for this Prusa enclosure by Voxel 3D Netherland. This is so, so much cheaper than the official enclosure option, so that's what I'm going for. This black PETG is a new roll of X3D, and I think the stringing is probably a little bit better again. But like before, you can see some VFAs on some of the flat surfaces. Just to keep in mind that these are printed with a 0.25mm layer height, so they're going to look a bit coarser overall. And the first layer over this giant part is exceptional, so great work there. Finally, some of these pieces need support material, so I took the chance to use another tool to run a thin layer of PLA for the support interface. And as you can see, you can peel it off super easy from the PETG, and it leaves a pretty clean underside on the supported area. Print quality for me is acceptable. Pretty good, but nothing amazing. And it has been reliable, with just under 70 trouble-free hours on it so far. As well as Bamboo Lab's flagship H2D, I've also reviewed Creality's flagship K2 Plus this year. And the Excel's advantage over both of these is efficient multicolor. With the more tools you use, the further ahead it pulls. But there are some areas where the Excel feels a little dated. The H2D has a crisp, high-resolution display akin to a mobile phone, and that makes it easy for new users to navigate because it feels familiar. Generally, it's intuitive and easy to use without any training. And the K2 Plus basically copied this, so it's in the same boat. The XL's display is vibrant and has plenty of space, but it seems to struggle to display all of the information that you need. For instance, I really want to have the temperatures of all the tools listed across the top or bottom, but the closest option I can find is to dedicate one slot to cycling through them one after each other. Overall, it just feels old school compared to what is universally offered by other manufacturers these days, and I hope this is an area that Prusa are looking to improve at in future. The next area I'd like to compare is remote control and monitoring. And I know not everyone likes the cloud, but Bamboo Lab does do this well, with a webcam built right into the printer by default. Creality again copied this functionality, and previously, Prusa's equivalent, Prusa Connect, which works over the cloud, in my opinion was quite lackluster, with missing information and no way to have a real-time camera feed. Consequently, I decided to run with Octoprint, but this time I was keen to give Prusa Connect another go. Firstly, because since then it's had development and features added, running nicely out of the web browser, as well as being embedded straight into Prusa Slicer, just like we have with other brands, but mainly because the Buddy 3D camera has been released, which gives a real-time feed, but with a motorized head so you can monitor multiple 3D printers, which I think is a good feature. There is a big focus on security as well. Prusa also finally have their own mobile app. The Prusa Connect interface is embedded within, bringing them in line with their rivals. My camera is still on the way, so the biggest remaining problem with Prusa Connect is how slow the Wi-Fi is on the XL. Uploading to the cloud is fast, but getting that file to the machine is molasses slow. Technically, the print job will start before it's completely downloaded, but again, it just feels a little dated compared to what's available elsewhere. Prusa Slicer is absolutely an excellent slicer, but again, there's a few little things that would make a big difference. Something that's sorely missing is the slicer talking directly to the printer to retrieve the loaded filaments. With one click, Bamboo Lab and Creality printers make this very simple. And Prusa Slicer does talk to the printer through Prusa Connect. It knows the status of any connected printers, so you'd think this would be a formality to add a button to automatically sync the colors and types of filaments that are loaded up. The XL does score points for volume while printing. It's one of the quieter printers that I own. 
but I do find myself missing the convenience of AMS loading and I'll be exploring if there's any community mods to add similar convenience. I've got one more complaint that I think is pretty fair. And when you first open the box, you get this sheet proclaiming how Prusa supports and advances open source. And this is something that for many years now has been one of the major selling points for their brand. But a couple of years after launch, for the Excel at least, this just isn't true. Yes, there's printed parts on printables and some firmware stuff on GitHub, but most of the other components simply have not been uploaded. And I try to make a habit on this channel of comparing what's advertised versus reality. And in this area, the Excel is definitely falling short. So what's next? My immediate job is to finish packaging back up the old printer so I can clear some space for other projects like the SB08. And I'm gonna keep pumping out all of the enclosure parts on this machine, hoping it stays reliable. And you can expect an update video going through that in the future. Hopefully this updated video is useful for those considering buying a new Prusa XL. Let me know where you stand on this 3D printer down in the comments section. Thank you to Shane from Prusa for supporting me and providing the new machine. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.